today we're going to install the last radiator and bend some tubes. <laughs> All right, so I've got the top radiator rinsed and installed, and I've been doing some of the more complicated bends with the acrylic tubing. I've done that off camera, just getting used to using uh, this particular tube. It's the Bits Power uh, Crystal tubing, it's acrylic. And uh, so far so good, I'm really enjoying working with the acrylic. I've got the heat gun set to about 530 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, so far, the more complicated bends have been going really, really well. Uh, I like how the look is kind of coming together now. And uh, I'm getting really excited because I really want to get this thing kind of filled up, get all the tubing in, get it running, get it leak tested and powered up. Uh, you know, I feel like nothing's worse than you buy a whole bunch of new hardware, you get it all kind of ready to go, ready to install but you can't use it because you have so much more customization to do. So let's go ahead and get the bottom radiator installed. Um, we're gonna do a push-pull configuration with six total fans. So we'll get those installed on the radiator. Uh, one of the really cool things is that this Lee and Lee case actually comes with such an easily removable bottom plate to mount your fans and radiator onto. So we can just pull that plate out, mount everything up, and then put it back in the case with a little click and two little screws. So I really wanna just jump right into it and let's get started. So one of the things I really like about this case is that there's just two little screws holding in the bottom plate and then these little black clips just pop this bottom plate right out. And that's great because you can just use that to mount all your fans to your radiator uh, and it just makes, just makes installation that much easier because once we're done, we're just gonna slide it in, pop it down, put in these two screws and we're good to go. So the plan with this was to come out of the reservoir and into the monoblock. This port must be the inlet port for this monoblock. So then we have our outlet port going into the radiator. Now I could have just gone directly out of the monoblock into the GPU, but I wanted to have a dual radiator setup. So to do that, I felt like the least complicated way to plumb that would be to plumb it from the CPU into the radiator, from the radiator back into the GPU, and we'll go out of the bottom of the GPU into the bottom radiator and then back into the reservoir. So let's go ahead and start bending the tube that we're going to bend to move from the top radiator down into the GPU. So I'm trying to keep most of the symmetry horizontal. So to do that, I would like to come down. I don't want to block these two because these are actually kind of nice horizontal and lined up like that. So I kind of want to come down a little bit further if I can and then come across over and in. So what I might try to do is I might try to line it up with this or I might try to bring it kind of uh, down and forward and then out and in. So I'll have to play with it a little bit, little bit and see what we can do. I'll probably start with a 90 and then measure it and work my way from there.
Well, it's been a long night. We got all the tubing done, got the system primed, and now we're going to let it run a leak test for at least 24 hours to make sure that there are no leaks in the system. Once we've confirmed that there's no leaks left in the system, we'll go ahead and get all the electronics, the fans, the video card, and everything kind of hooked up, powered up, and we'll do our first boot test with the 5950X paired with the 3090, all water-cooled. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty excited to see what this thing can do when it's fully powered up and ready to go. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.